Greetings, everybody. Uh, this is going to be part three of the Isaiah 53 uh, series. It's on the suffering servant. It's something I did a number of years ago, but uh, probably some duplicate information. But, you know, what can I tell you? Never hurts to, uh, I well, hear some of the most important chapters of the Bible to hear them the same information again perhaps from a different point of view what can I tell you Isaiah 53 I consider it one of the most important chapters in the Bible so I did this video in July of 2014 and seriously everybody I've got over a thousand videos on YouTube so if you've got a uh, an audio or video copier and you want to copy anything I don't copyright anything, but uh, so, you know, feel free to copy them, post them anywhere. I don't care. All glory to Jesus because I don't do this for uh, my health and I don't do this for a buck. So, all right, let's take a look. Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. Hello, this is Chaplain Bob. Light of the World Ministries. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be, um, I was just flipping, flipped open a Bible I had. Uh, probably the nicest Bible. I don't, don't read like I should have or used to in the past. But I was flipping it open, and lo and behold, it came to the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. This is known as the Suffering Servant chapter. And of course, the Jews, most of them, uh, will deny that this is about Jesus. But if it's not about Jesus, who's it about? That's what I always ask them. And... They always, well, you know, we don't know, or maybe it's somebody in the future who has yet to appear. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's read Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah is a really interesting book. It was called the Miniature Bible. Um, because guess what? It has... 66 chapters and the Bible has 66 books and um, it has judgment proclaimed on part of it and then restoration in the last part of it so there's a lot of uh, Isaiah's really mirrors the Bible in a lot of ways so it's, it's one of those books that, um, sadly, I wish I knew more about it. I mean, there's just some books, you know, the Bible's three quarters of a million words. And to specialize in any one area could take a lifetime. So, you know, and I try to be, uh, I guess you could say, a generalist. You could ask me a question about virtually anything, and I could give you an introduction and usually answer most questions, but if you wanted to get deeply into any single subject, you know, I might not be able to um, go deep into it, but I've covered most subjects, at least introductory-wise, but Isaiah is one of those books that uh, I just, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough one. I consider the book of Revelation a lot easier than the book of Isaiah. So, Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, 
and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And if you want to do a cross-reference, take a look at Mark chapter 9 and verse 12. Okay, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. You know, it's an interesting cross-reference is uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Verse 9, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Speaking of Jesus, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. For he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Isn't that a wonderful cross-reference? Okay, Isaiah 53, 4, chapter, uh, verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isn't that true? Christ was beaten uh, by the Jews and by the Romans. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers, and her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. Cross-reference this with the first letter of Peter. Chapter 1. And verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Cross-reference that with Philippians 2.9, Exodus 12.5, and if you read John 1.29, we read the following. In John 1.29, we read, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. 
and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. All right, let's continue with Isaiah. All right, Isaiah 53, verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Now, if you'll turn to Matthew 27, 57, um, after Christ died, when the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. So he was, um, he was buried in a rich man's tomb. All right, uh, verse 10, Isaiah 53, 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering, an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and he shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Did you catch that? By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, not all, many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Wherefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Uh, go to Mark 15.28. We'll cross-reference that. You know, you could read this whole chapter 15 of Mark. And it's just, you know, when you cross-reference this with Isaiah 53, it's just amazing. Okay? I mean, Mark 15, 15. And so Pilate, willing to contend, content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus, whom he had scourged when he had scourged him to be crucified. Huh. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshipped him. Of course, they're mocking him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put on and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Then they compelled one, Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they did bring him unto the place Golgotha, that is, being interpreted, the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. 
And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him they crucify two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking, said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. Wow. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Three hours of darkness. When you cross-reference this with Joel um, in chapter 3, uh, let's see. Oh, let's read verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. You see, now this is talking about Christ's second coming. Okay? But the sun was darkened on his first coming. All right, uh, Mark 15, 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabak Thanai, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias, which is the Greek rending of uh, Isaiah. I'm sorry, I meant to say Elijah. Verse 36, And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. You know, that's interesting because only the high priest could go behind the veil of the temple. And that was only, uh, I believe, once a year when you could go into the Holy of Holies. And it didn't rent from the bottom to the top. It topped from the top to the bottom, which is from God to man. God didn't ascend to man. Man didn't ascend to God. God descended to man. Verse 39. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that, he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, truly this man was the Son of God. Isn't that something? Think about, uh, turn to Psalms 22 and think about this. Let's see, Psalms 22, verse 11. Think about this when uh, you think about Jesus up on the cross. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. 
They gaped upon me with their mouths as a, as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones, all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. O my strength, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. Will I praise thee? Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye the seed of Jacob, glorifying him and fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. All right, I think, I think that is, uh, I think that's uh, enough to close it. I hope you've enjoyed this and learn something all blessings praise glory and honor belong to jesus who is the christ in whose precious name i pray amen oh one more thing before i close this out don't be surprised if the um, the antichrist beast the man of sin the son of perdition uh, it speaks in Revelation how he's going to have a head wound that's healed. Don't be surprised if they try to use that head wound that gets healed as being the fulfillment of this chapter 53 in Isaiah. I don't know if it'll happen, but it wouldn't surprise me. So you can look up the, uh, the beast and the head wound that gets healed on your own. Wouldn't be hard to find. All right. Take care. Bye. In Jesus' name. Amen.